Let's see if we can give you a little bit more sunshine in there. Yeah, it's a little cloudy out. Bright in my day, Randy. We're in the room with a dynamic driving simulator, and this is the machine that actually translates the models into motion for the human to experience. I've always been interested in cars, just since I was a little kid. Anything I could drive, right? Things that gave me that excitement or needs for speed, but I also wanted to see why it was fast or what could make it faster. So the natural marriage of those two is to develop vehicles. All right, we got that all loaded up for you and you're good to go. It's actually pretty outstanding how many different suspensions and tracks we can go through in a single day here in the simulator versus what we used to do physically. We have some days where we do 50, 60, 70 runs of different suspension parts and tracks, and you would never even get close to that kind of number when you're uh, doing it in the physical world. All right, I've been told it's time to take a rainy day at Lommel here. All right, transport me to Europe, please. <laughs> We've brought the globe into one virtual environment, whether that's working with our European team or the US team. You can try things where you normally would have to build prototypes, so you can make changes within a few mouse clicks. We have a camera installed in this simulator room that we can stream over our system, and the people that are in a different country or a different region can see the simulator running. The quality of the vehicle is going to be better just because of the sheer amount of work that we can do in a quick, quick manner. I'm trying to give the customer the vehicle that I want. I want to be confident in the truck as it's towing a trailer down the road. We can take a trailer that's loaded up to its maximum weight and we can drive that in the simulator and see how the vehicle reacts to it. We can also take that trailer and load it incorrectly like a customer might do in the field and look and see how the vehicle responds to that. Uh-oh. <laughs> See? Went off the track. I tried to do a little too much. At least I didn't hit the guardrail. <laughs> so the first time I got in the simulator, it was a surreal experience to be able to drive the models that I've been developing for months on the computer and truly interact with them. Some of the features we've evaluated and developed on the simulator, adaptive cruise control, lane centering, all the way up to Blue Cruise and Active Glide. We're able to safely um, put drivers of various levels of capability in very dangerous situations, cut-in situations on the highway, let's say. And if something were to go wrong, we just reset the simulator. Our virtual engineering efforts allow us to do more work up front, to work out potential issues with our systems well ahead of prototype vehicles. Making decisions on programs earlier on and getting the target right for the customer is going to help us in quality because you're not going to have the late changes. We have real-time data streaming on everything we're doing. From when we opened in February to now, I think we've easily exceeded even my own vision. Instead of people talking about it as a piece of technology, they're using it as part of the mainstream development of programs now. When you've gotten to that point with a piece of technology where it's ingrained and expected, that's a, that's a huge win.